delay and we'll just del uh, delete that delay and just be left with our RV7000 which as you remember is set up in an effects loop on AUX1 goes out to this guy and then it gets returned into AUX1 return which has been thoughtfully labeled RV7000. Okay so reverb is probably the easiest effect to understand because we hear it in our natural world all the time. It kind of gives us an auditory clue as to how large the environment is that we're, um, that we're playing in. Let me just bring down these sends here that we were using just a little while ago. And as you remember, send one is ganged up with aux one, which goes down to here. So if I bring this up, I should be hearing some reverb on the snare. Great, now like pretty much all of these devices, you can scroll through patches. Or if you click on the folder icon, you can go through here and look at all the RV7000 patches. There's a ton of reverb patches here. And if you want to get your feet wet, kind of programming some of these guys, just show the programmer. Let me scroll up here. And all of the parameters that you need to get to are on the left hand, uh, left and right hand side in the form of four knobs down here, four knobs on here, and also these ones on the front here. Now the more important ones are probably your decay. And as you can see, that adjusts the decay time of your reverb tail. So typically a longer decay will give you a clue that it's in a much bigger place. It sounds much bigger than this. And another one to look out for is pre-delay. Now, if you give that a little bit of pre-delay, what that does is transposes your tail back in time a little bit because that kind of gives you a clue as to how big the room is as well. If you're standing in the middle of a room and you clap your hands and the walls of that big room is, say, 100 feet away, a sound travels at about a, a foot a millisecond. So that will hit the wall in about 100 milliseconds and then come back. So it'll probably be 200 milliseconds until you actually hear any of this reverb tail. So really get used to some of these parameters on the left hand, uh, left and right hand side. If this is a little bit too deep for you, I've got a better reverb for you. Let me go ahead and right click here and delete that. When I say a better reverb, the RV7 is the best reverb. But if this is a little bit too much for you, just go ahead and grab the RV7 and bring that go over here. Now, because our effects send hasn't been changed and we've replaced the RV7000 with the RV7, then we should be able to hear reverb. We sure do, because as soon as we deleted that other reverb and then dragged another one in, it has automatically been placed into AUX1 and you can see that it's been named here. So this is a much easier way to go through. You can have the various types of reverb right here. You can adjust your size, your decay, your high frequency damping. And by the way, if you have any kind of effect like a reverb and delay or whatever, and there's a dry wet, I would normally recommend having that all the way to the wet if you're using it in an effects loop because rather than adjusting the level of reverb from here, adjust it from your AUX send, or in this case, the send off of your redrum. Okay, let's imagine I want to delete this guy and go to the very next one here, which is a delay line. And I'll bring that guy in right here. Okay, 